Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's stand in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Did you come ready to receive? Did you come with an ear to hear what the Spirit of God is saying to the church? Because I came with an anointing to bring the transformation into the life of somebody. Because the Spirit of God spoke to me and said there are plagues that must be stopped today. There are epidemics that must be stopped. You see, there are epidemics that are natural. There are natural epidemics like the flu. But then there are also spiritual epidemics. That's why the Bible says the a thousand shall fall by one side and ten thousand by the right side. It shall not come nigh you. So there is an epidemic. So there are epidemics of people whose destinies get buried. There's an epidemic of people who get depressed. There's an epidemic of poverty. There's an epidemic of financial stagnation. There's an epidemic of destiny stagnation. There's an epidemic of marriage stagnation. But I came with an anointing in the name of Jesus to terminate every epidemic in the life of somebody. If you came with faith in your heart, if you came with desire in your heart, then you are going to do what? You are not poor. That anointing into your life in the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. We're preaching this month about the altars. Hallelujah. And an altar is a place of sacrifice. There are two types of altars. There is the altar of sacrifice and the altar of incense. Next month, we're going to talk about the altar of incense. But this month, we're going to focus on what? The altar of sacrifice. Now, the Bible says that God spoke to Moses. He said, I want you to build a tabernacle based on that which you see in heaven because I want to show you how to access the realm of glory. Now what is the realm of glory? Now when you read the scriptures it talks about what? The glory of God. Well, the glory of God is when the spirit does what? Materializes on the earth. Oh boy, is there somebody with me today? I said the glory of God is when what? The spirit realm does what? Materializes on the earth. And God said, I want you to build a tabernacle. And this tabernacle is going to show people how to access the realm. When the things that I have in the realm of the spirit will be materialized in their life. Oh boy, I was praying two nights ago and the word of the Lord came to me and he said, he said, son, my word says that my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. And then I began to prophesy and I heard myself say, and my word says that my God will supply all your needs according to how much the spirit again is materializing in your life. I said, bah. because the realm of glory is the realm of the materialization of the spirit realm. My, my, my. Oh, hallelujah. Do you know that water can materialize? When it materializes, it becomes what? Ice. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. It now becomes a substance uh, that you can even build on it. Uh, you can even put a house on top of it. Uh, when it does what? Uh, materialize. But well, let me tell you, the realm of the spirit can do what? Materialize. Mm -mm -mm. Now, so the tabernacle, I'm just, I'm just doing a refresher, amen? Hallelujah, this is what I preached last Sunday. And then we're going to go to the scripture. So the tabernacle that Moses saw in the realm of the spirit, and God said, I want you to build this tabernacle. The tabernacle had three sections. It had what? Outer court, what? Holy place, and what? Holy of holies. Or outer court, what? Inner court, and what? Holy of Holies. Mm. Now the Holy of Holies was where you had what? The Ark of the Covenant. Which was, which was a picture of the throne of God. Mm -mm -mm. And on top of it was glory. It was called Shekinah. There was a fire on it. Which was not a human fire. It was what? 
the Shekinah, which means this was the presence of God materialized. <laughs> this was the materialization of the presence. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right now, we sense the anointing. Huh. But the Holy of Holies is not the place of the anointing. The Holy of Holies is a place where the, the Lamb of God materializes. And it says, in that place, huh, you had in that place, you had what? Manna. What is manna? Manna is angel's food that materialized on the earth. <laughs> oh. oh, can I preach to somebody here? Man is what? Angel's food. So man symbolizes angelic supply. Jesus. Mm. It symbolizes what? Angelic supply. Yet it also had Aaron's rod. Because there's a time when Aaron and the other elders took their rods and put it in the Holy of Holies. And when they put it there, Aaron's rod grew flowers. So, a rod doesn't grow flowers. A rod doesn't bud. That means, that's symbolic of God causing to bud the impossible out of you. Jesus. Oh boy. That's God causing what? The body of what? The impossible out of you. So the lamb of to the lamb of the Holy of Holies is the lamb of what? Glory. Now, af after that, to enter that, you have to go through what? The holy place. In the holy place, you had three things. You had the altar of incense, which next month we're going to talk about. Because to enter into that place where the spirit realm materializes, the gate to that is the altar of incense. We're going to talk about the altar of incense. Hallelujah. Somebody's going to learn. You come to church to do what? Learn. Somebody say, learn. Hallelujah. Don't come to church just to feel good. You come to church to learn something. Amen. Now, in that holy place, you had the menorah, which was the seven lampstands. That symbolizes the anointing, because the holy place is the place of the anointing. Shakata. Ha. And then you also had the showbread. Hmm. That's the bread of revelation that produces manifestation. <laughs> then, you then had, you left that and you went to what? The outer court. And in the outer court, the beginning of the outer court was what? The altar of what? The altar of what? Sacrifice. Followed by the brazen lever where you wash yourself looking at a mirror for sanctification. Now, I'm going to preach this message to you today. I'm going to preach it. Hallelujah. I'm going to do some exegesis today. Let's now turn. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Let's now turn to the slides. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We're going to read it right at the beginning and then, uh, and then we're going to start. Hallelujah. Oh, First Chronicles. Glory be to God. First Chronicles. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Okay. Are you ready to read this? Hallelujah. So if I could. Let somebody take. Uh, I mean Pastor John. I mean take the mic. I want you to read for me today. Javara. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Okay Pastor John start. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So David said to Joab and the leaders of the people. Go, count Israel from Beersheba to Dan, and bring me their total, so that I may know it. Joab said, May the Lord add to his people a hundred times as many as there are. But, my lord the king, are they not all, the lord, all my lord's servants? Why then does my lord require this? Why will he bring guilt on Israel? But the king's word prevailed over Joab. So Joab left and went through all Israel and came to Jerusalem. Then Joab gave the total of the census of the people to David, and all Israel were 1,100,000 men who drew the sword, and in Judah, 470,000 men who drew the sword. But he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them, because the king's order was detestable to Joab. Now God was displeased with this act of arrogance and pride, and he struck Israel. Okay, that's fine. Now, I want you to go to the first verse. The first verse.
Okay, what it says here. Okay, the Bible says, So Satan arose, who? Satan prodded and provoked David to do what? Number the people. Okay, let's take our seats. Manda Masha. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God. Glory, 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 glory be to God. Glory be to God. Holy Spirit, I thank you for your word. I thank you for what you're going to do in the lives of the people today. In the name of Jesus. Now, there's something you've got to understand about the way the realm of the Spirit operates. At this time, the anointing of David had subdued the Philistines. The anointing of David had brought Israel out of a nation that whose borders were not secure to a nation now who their borders were secure. He had now brought the nation to a place of prosperity. That anointing had lifted up David but that anointing had also done what? Lifted up Israel. At that point Israel was now a mountain top nation. Are you with me? Israel was now the head and not the tail and above only and not beneath. Now so the demonic before, before David arose and by the anointing defeated Goliath. Before David arose and by the anointing defeated the Philistines. Before David arose and by the anointing gathered Israel and Judah into one nation. Before that happened the Philistines and we, which are symbolic of the demonic had occupied various parts of Israel and they would torment Israel on a yearly basis. There was a cycle. There was a cycle of the Philistines reading. Now in many people's lives there is a cycle. I said there's a cycle. So in the life of Israel there was a cycle. But God raised up a David. And when God raised up a David, he put an end to the cycle. He put an end to the Philistine cycle. Somebody say my Philistine cycle shall come to an end. Oh, what's the Philistine cycle? The Philistine cycle is a cycle where you advance. It's a cycle where you acquire. It's a cycle where you grow. And then the Philistines come and take back what you got. And you go right back to the beginning. And then you grow. And then you expand. But God raised up a man who won a defining battle. He defeated their champion. Then he defeated them again and again and again and hallelujah I declare right now that by the anointing the anointing shall come upon you to take care of your Philistine battle now do you know who the Philistines are? the Philistines are the Palestinians <laughs> so the Philistines is a familiar enemy it's what he says there came a champion from Gaza we're still talking about where Gaza <laughs> so the Philistines see they, they actually are an enemy that is a known enemy to you this is something who in 2000 it defeated you in 2006, he defeated you too. So this is, Philistines is this type of enemy. It's not an unusual enemy. It's an enemy that you know. And the enemy knows you. Shake up. But David arose by the anointing and he defeated the Philistines. Somebody say, I shall defeat the Philistines in my life. Now the Bible says, so David now had secured all Israel. Hallelujah. Now the demonic Satan had no more access into Israel. No Philistine army could penetrate. No force of darkness could penetrate. David was serving the Lord. David was leading the nation in righteousness. There was no access point. So because there was no access point, the Bible says that Satan arose and tempted David. So he tempted David to break the spiritual law. Mm -hmm. So he tempted David to do what? He tempted David to number the people. Now why was numbering the people breaking the spiritual law? Because God Almighty, they had won the 
their bodies by the anointing. Jesus. Oh, somebody's going to get this today. Because I came to deliver somebody today. You see, you've got to understand that Israel did not rise up by the might of their hand. That Israel did not rise up by their ability. It's not by might, it's not by power, but by my spirit, said the Lord. There was not supposed to be a battle between David and Goliath. That was not a fair contest because it was a boy fighting against a giant. But the boy was not fighting by himself. He was fighting with the anointing. He was fighting with divinity on humanity. So when the divinity comes on humanity, it empowers a person to do the impossible. So David was somebody who was empowered by God to do the impossible. And under that impossible anointing, hallelujah, he rose up and defeated the giant. So David was a man who ruled by what? The anointing. Now you've got to understand, God gifts people, so you're gifted. Joseph was gifted. Daniel was gifted. But there's a difference when the gifting becomes anointed. Shh. Woo! How you with you? Because God can anoint the gift. So when the gifting comes, with the gifting, you can do mighty things. But with the anointing, you can do impossible things. Shh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The battle that you are not supposed to win, you win. The place you are not supposed to go, you go. What you are not supposed to achieve, you achieve. Where your normal limitation ends, the anointing takes over. So that's the anointing. So the anointing is to take you beyond natural ability. And to take you in the realm of what? Supernatural ability. So David, he rose up by the anointing. He didn't rise up by the natural. Because David is symbolic of a person that doesn't have connections. David was not like Saul. Saul was from Kish. Saul came from what? An influential family. David came from where? Following ships behind. It's what the Bible says. God said, he spoke to Nathan and said, God prophesied to my servant David. Tell him that I took him from following sheep. He didn't say, I took you from leading sheep. He said, I took you from what? Following sheep. What, what do you see when you follow sheep? Sheep's behind. So I took you from following sheep. And I took you and I raised you up and made you a king unto my people. And I exalted you. Just to tell you, I took you from there and I put an anointing on you. I put a favor on you and I raised you up. You're raised up by the anointing, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. I came to declare to somebody that you shall be raised up by the anointing. I said you shall be raised up by the anointing. The anointing can take you where your gift can take you. The anointing can take you where your connection cannot take you. The anointing can take you where your relationships cannot take you. You can access things by the anointing and by the favor of God. Jesus. So he was a man who was made by the anointing. Somebody say, made in China. Well, David was made in God. Shh. Oh, God. Some say, made in God. But that's what it means to be a man of God. It means to be made in God. Shaka time. He was a God-made man, living in a God-made nation, in a God-made palace. Who? Hallelujah. He wasn't set up by his parents. He was set up by God. He wasn't set up by his brothers. There was nothing in the system. Can I push this thing? There was nothing in David's system that supported what God had for him. Jesus. Hey, yeah, yeah. He, the parental system did not support it. The family system did not support it. He was only supported by what? God. So David symbolizes a man 
who rose up purely by the hand of God. That's why he's such an icon forever. Who? Because he shows what is possible. Oh, can I hear somebody? I said he does what? He shows what is possible. So he rises by the anointing. Now he's getting older and instead of understanding that what it takes to get, it takes to keep. He now wants to switch from the anointing to what? The hand of flesh. <laughs> so he says, go and count the people. Is it because when David fought before, he fought by a law where it says one shall chase away a thousand and two ten thousand. That means there was an anointing that was on the Israeli soldiers that caused them to fight on a different frequency. You, there's no child, there's no Shaolin, there's no Kung Fu, there's no Jujutsu that can stand this type of fighting because it was a fighting that came from the spirit realm. That is why when the angel spoke to Gideon, he said, Shout the sword of Gideon and the sword of God. <laughs> Who? That means the sword of Gideon and the sword of God. Who? That means me saying the bullet of Andre and the bullet of God. Who? That's different. Shh. Ha <laughs> ha. That's the bullet of Andre and the bullet of God. So David carried the spear of David and the spear of God. The fist of David and the fist of God. He was an instrument of a divine fist. He did not win battles like Pharaoh. He did not win battles like Babylon. He did not win battles like the Assyrians by sheer force of numbers. He won by the anointing. And so he decided. And so Satan moved him to violate a spiritual principle so as to create an open door yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. oh are you with me because Satan had nothing to penetrate so he had to tempt him to break something so he can penetrate my god the devil is a liar I said somebody's about to get something. Hallelujah. Right now you're on a economy of blessing. You're going from blessing to blessing. Your future is bright. Hallelujah. If you stay on course, it's just going to get brighter and brighter and brighter. Don't let no devil tempt you of course. Don't let no devil cause you to open a door that he can come in and start to eradicate what God has built on the inside of you. Somebody said the devil is a liar. But that happened to David. And so it happened to David. And his, his, his own army soldier, his own commander said, David, don't, don't do this. Because you know we have not won no battle by our numbers. We have only won a battle by the anointing. Do not do this thing. But Satan had provoked him. Satan had agitated him. Satan had triggered him. Satan had created an itch. And he was getting his fix. Oh. Oh, can I have somebody here? Can I have somebody here? Ay, ay, ay. So read on. Okay. Pastor John, yes. Hallelujah. Read on. Yes. So he did not count Levi and Benjamin among them. Yes. Because the king's order was detestable to Joab. Yes. Now God was displeased with this act of arrogance and pride. Yes. And he struck Israel. Hmm. Then David said to God, I have sinned greatly because I have done this thing. But now I beseech you, take away the wickedness and guilt of your servant. Now, for I one thing about David, he was an expert repenter. Some people are experts at committing, but David, he was an expert at repenting. David knew how to repent. Understand me? He knew that he that hideth his sin shall not prosper, but he that confesseth it shall obtain mercy. So David, when he confessed it, he confessed it raw. Now, some of you don't understand this. I remember. Huh, 
I've been delivered from that demon now. But I had a speeding demon when I was driving. And in England, I used to break every driving law. And I used to get excitement from, I tell you, just bypassing traffic. So sometimes if I go, and I was saved, filled with the Holy Ghost, but I had a speeding demon. Are you with me? And I would get, hallelujah, to the traffic lights. And somebody on the side goes, Vroom, and I go, Vroom. I thought, boy, we're going to have some fun today. Hallelujah. That was me. Hallelujah. I mean, and we take them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My, my, my. So, I used to, in terms of traffic, there's been traffic, perhaps 20 cars in front of me. And I have seen the traffic light. And just about the traffic light is about to turn on. I have gone on the pavement. And, oh boy. Half pavement, half, half road. On the pavement. And put all 20 cars and go. And I said, woo, I like the rush. Woo, Lord, that felt good. I had a rush. I, yeah, I was addicted to speeding. I mean, I, I, I felt something go through my body. Oh, Lord, went through my toes. I, oh, that felt good. It felt good breaking the law. It felt good speeding. I didn't care if they cursed me. That even felt good. But there was a day in which I was, it was, it was going to be what? Judgment day. Because I had done it all the time and the police had never caught me. <laughs> but judgment day was coming. So one day, hallelujah, I remember, I can remember the exact part of London. Hallelujah, I tell you, there was like traffic, I like six or seven cars. I'm thinking, me waiting, my God, I'm just going, I was just, I as soon as it was about to change, I had it, I mean, I just took off. As I took off, coming down was the popo, <laughs> the police. Ay, 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 ay. The police, oh my God. And the police came, boom. And the police said, what are you doing? I said, immediately I knew, this I am in trouble. This is points on my license. This is appearing court. This is serious trouble. Because listen, I was in violation of so many laws. I said, Mr. Officer, I am doing pure foolishness. <laughs> he said, you, you know what? I said, Mr. Officer, I am doing extreme nonsense. He said, so you know that? I said, Mr. Officer, what I am doing, it is absolutely terrible. He said, and you know what to do is terrible. I said, Mr. Officer, believe me, what I've just done is so great, it is terrible. Officer said, hmm, you are a man who knows the wrong that you have done. I said, I tell you, Mr. Officer, I told you that what I just did was the most atrocious act. Well, the officer said, because you know that what you did was such an atrocious act and you have confessed it, I will let you go. I said, Mr. Officer, I guarantee you, after today, this kind of atrocious act, I will never do it again. I was just saying, okay, okay, go. Hey, that's called confession. <laughs> that's called what? Confession. Hey, that's how I avoided going to court. By call true confession of my sins. From that day, I got 70% deliverance. <laughs> The other 30% happened gradually. <laughs> now I'm fully delivered. <laughs> so what I'm saying is this. David knew how to do what? Confess. And he said, Father, your servant, your servant has sinned. Purge me of this guilt, O oh God. I have told him. He confessed with rawness. They say, well, Father, it was her fault. Father, it was him. Father, it was what? It was... I was, you know... Father, 
No, no, no. That's when you're going to get into what? Serious trouble. Don't you know what If you're confessing, just confess. Okay. Okay, now we don't. I beseech you, take away the wickedness and guilt of your servant, for I have acted very foolishly. So he, he called it, God didn't call it wickedness. He said, God, I did what? Wickedness. Go on. Go and tell David, saying, Thus says the Lord, I offer you three choices. Wow. Choose for yourself one of them, which I will do to you as punishment for your sin. So God came to David and said to him, Now, there are certain violations that if you do them, you're going to get a harvest. God will forgive you, but the violation carries a penalty. Bible says the wages of sin is death. So there are certain violations they carry wages, even after you are forgiven. <laughs> okay. This was one of them. Okay, go on. So God came to David and said to him, Thus says the Lord, Choose for yourself either three years of famine or three months to be swept away before your enemies while the sword of your enemies overtakes you. Or else, three days of the sword of the Lord and plague in the land and the angel of the Lord bringing destruction throughout all the territory of Israel. Now therefore, consider what answer I shall return to him who sent me. David said to God, I am in great distress. Please let me fall into the hands of the Lord for his mercies are very great. Wow. But do not let me fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a plague on Israel and 70,000 men of Israel fell. Jesus. God sent an angel to Jerusalem to destroy it. And as he was destroying it, the Lord looked and relented concerning the catastrophe and said to the destroying angel, it is enough. Now remove your hand of judgment. And the angel of the Lord was standing by the threshing floor of Ornan, the Jebusite. Mm. Then David raised his eyes and saw the angel of the Lord standing between earth and heaven, Jesus. having a drawn sword in his hand stretched out over Jerusalem. Wow. Then David and the elders, covered in sackcloth, fell on their faces. Then the angel of the Lord commanded God to say to David that David should go up and build an altar to the Lord on the threshing floor. Wow. So the angel... <laughs> The angel has been instructed. The angel has been instructed. He says, stop the judgment. But for the instruction of the angel to take effect, the angel must give an instruction through the prophet to David and says, tell David to go and build an altar. Hmm. Now, there are things in your life that your decisions opened up and it's like a plague in your life and to stop the plague you got to build an altar <laughs> jesus Whew. oh are you hearing me oh there's a plague some say there's a plague 70,000 people are dead. The angel's sword is not in his shop. The angel's sword is still stretched out over Jerusalem. And the angel said, you better go build an altar. Because altars are a place of transaction. Altars are a place where something is released from the earth to the heavens. And then something is released from the heavens to the earth. There was a plague. Mm -mm -mm. Some there's a plague with your children, plague with your finances, plague in your relationships, plague in various areas of your life. It's a plague. A plague spreads. How do you stop the plague? If prayer would have stopped the plague, David would have stopped it by prayer. If repentance would have stopped the plague, David had already repented. But the angel said, if you want to stop the plague, build an altar. Continue reading. So David went up at God's word, which he spoke in the name of the Lord. Now Ornan was threshing wheat, and he turned back and saw the angel, and his four sons who were with him hid themselves. As David came to Ornan, 
when I looked and saw him, I went out from the threshing floor and bowed down before David with his face to the ground. Now, Onan saw the angel. Now, when people start seeing angels like this, that's called the realm of glory. Because what it means, it means the spirit realm is materializing on the earth. When the spirit realm materializes on the earth, people start seeing stuff. Right now, there are angels here. Because right now, we're in the level of the anointing. But if we hit the level of the glory, people are going to start, the spirit realm is going to begin to materialize in the physical. Jesus. And this time, it was manifesting for judgment. Hmm. Okay, continue. Jesus. Then David said to Ornan, Give me the sight of this threshing floor, so that I may build an altar on it to the Lord. You shall charge him the full price for it, so that a plague may be averted from the people. Ornan said to David, Take it for yourself, and let my lord the king do what is good in his eyes. See, I will give you the oxen also for burnt offerings, and the threshing sledges, heavy wooden platforms for wood, and the wheat for the grain offering. I give it all. But King David said to Ornan, No, I will certainly pay the full price, for I will not take what is yours for the Lord, nor offer a burnt offering which costs me nothing. He says, I will not offer a burnt offering that costs me nothing. <laughs> that means the altar of sacrifice it can only be built by something that costs you. Oh, yeah, yeah. The man offer, he says, I, he said, I cannot do it that way. I have to pay you for it. I, I have to feel it. <laughs> oh, Lord. Oh, can I push to somebody? So, he says, right now, I need to stop a plague. I, I know how to build an altar. You, you, you build an altar with something that costs you. Now, here's the thing. People want precious things from heaven for free oh can I help somebody here the only precious thing from heaven you got for free is Jesus is salvation I said it's what? salvation now the stopping of the plague that's not for free now there are plagues in Barbados right now there's a financial plague there is a Name me some time. Name me some plagues that are in the country. Name me some plagues. There's a witchcraft plague. Okay, there's a crime plague. What's the plague? The plagues that are affecting children, and the plague could be in your house. The plague could have entered your house because the stuff could have entered your child. And there's what? Gender identity. There's a gender identity plague. Okay. What, what the plague is there? Talk to me. There's a drugs plague. Okay. What else? Plagues. Crime and violence. Crime and violence plague. There's a sexual immorality plague. There's also what? A man shortage plague. Is it true? Lord of mercy. <laughs> There's also a good woman such as plague. Is this so? Huh? There's a plague too. I didn't say a woman such as. I said a good woman. There's a good woman such as plague. <laughs> There's a plague too. <laughs> Hallelujah. So they are plagues. They are plagues. And they affect people. How many of you can lift up your hands and say, well, I've already been beaten by one of these plagues. I have. I've been beaten by one of these plagues. I've been beaten. I've, I've been hit by the plague. Because it's a plague. 70,000 people in Israel had been hit by it. Jesus. So there are things now what is a plague a plague is an environmental catastrophe that takes place in a location 
If you're in the location, you experience it. <laughs> if you're what? In the location, you do what? Experience it. It is locational. How ah, I feel this in the anointing. The man of God had to do what? Build an altar. Okay, continue reading. So David gave Ornan 600 shekels of gold by weight for the site. 600 shekels of gold. He paid more for it. Because he, he wanted his gold account to fill it. The bank manager must know a significant withdrawal was made. Go on. Then David built an altar to the Lord there and presented burnt offerings and peace offerings. And he called on the Lord and he answered him with fire from heaven on the altar of burnt offering. So when David offered the offering, you know what happened? Fire fell from heaven. There was a what? Transaction. <laughs> there was a what? Transaction. Jesus. Woo! My God. Go on. Then the Lord commanded the avenging angel and he put his sword back in its sheath. At that time, when David saw that the Lord had answered him on the threshing floor of honor and the Jebusite, he sacrificed there. Wow, wow, wow. This man is something else. After it's done, he actually sacrificed again to say thank you. <laughs> he sacrificed again to say thank you. Now, do you notice that the angel only put his sword back after the sacrifice? As we come to the close of this message, this is not a long message. There are people who need to build an altar of sacrifices. And you need to sacrifice something major in your life. I know about the epidemic. I was a victim of a plague that is in the earth. It's a plague of men of God having dysfunctional marriages. And the plague hits my house. Are you with me? The plague hits me. 50% of every pastor's marriage in America ends in divorce because of the warfare surrounding marriage. The warfare, the warfare, because you see, when you're in the ministry, you need to, the ministry is battle, so you need to marry a military woman, <coughs> not just a Christian sister. Are with me? Are with me? So I didn't know. So I was just going with some fine looking Christian sisters who could pray, who could help, but they were not militaristic women who know spiritual Shaolin and Jiu Jitsu. <laughs> Are with me? Are with me? So there was an epidemic. The epidemic hit me. Shut at all. And I remember the Lord speaking to me. And he says, I want you to raise an altar. And I raised an altar and he told me what to sacrifice. I cannot tell you what I sacrificed. But believe me, I sacrificed. And I sacrificed. And because of my sacrifice, there was a release from heaven. And now, I have a spiritual Shaolin monk. <laughs> As a wife. <laughs> Amen. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, can somebody shout hallelujah? Oh Lord, hallelujah. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Hey. Who has the eye of the tiger <laughs> for the devil? <laughs> Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. <laughs> oh. 
My, my, my. Bless the Lord. I don't know what your epidemic is, what you've been touched by, but you need to hear God on how to stop the plague. There is a plague of single parents. Is single parenthood a plague? Huh? You can stop the plague. There's a plague of beautiful sisters. Listen, by the end of next year, my God, I want most of the, the ladies in this church who are single to be married. I declare it in the name of Jesus. No. But it's a plague. So the plague has to end. And happily married. Some say happily married. Amen. I'm a deacon that said that she receives it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Can somebody say, I receive? It's an epidemic. It's a what? Epidemic. Let's rise. Jesus. The Lord is here. Hallelujah. Say, Heavenly Father. In the name of Jesus, show me the sacrifice that I have got to raise up to stop the epidemics that are in the land, the plagues that are in the land from touching my life. Some things, prayer doesn't do it. Some things, even prayer and fasting is not enough. This was something that required prayer, fasting, and sacrifice. Jesus. Wow.